All right, and hi. Hello, hi. welcome to Nerd Talk. It's our episode four. 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 All right, today we are on location at Xavier School for the Gifted Youngsters. As you can see, we our have special guests. Some X Men back here and a Ninja Turtle because yeah. he's a mutant. Mutant is an Xavier isn't a School title. doesn't judge. <laughs> No discrimination I believe, against. I believe they would take the Mutant Turtles. Yeah, they would. Yeah. Uh, because they, they had some weird people in there. That's true. I mean, look at, uh, you know. Squid Boy. Yeah. That one guy. <laughs> <laughs> beast. Look at Beast. Yeah. And Nightcrawler. They don't look normal. They're hairy blue creatures. They are hairy blue creatures. So what's our first topic of the day? Uh, we can start with our, with, like, um, our headlines. Our Lines. big news, big recent news that we don't want to talk about too much. <laughs> um, a lot of but first sports. <laughs> Thanks for sports. Uh, All right, so headlines. Headlines. I thought we'd start with been a lot of crazy trailers released recently. A lot of big trailers. Today they released the trailer for Edge of Tomorrow, starring Tom Cruise and the amazingly hot Emily Blunt. It looks. It looks fun. It looks fun. Sci-fi Groundhog's Day. <laughs> yeah. Sci-fi run on today, starring Tom Cruise. <laughs> Emily Blunt. Blunt <laughs> Emily. <laughs> Emily Blunt looks badass. In it. Like, yeah, they have these little like fighting robots. Yeah, it's like the alien thing from Aliens for uh, Aliens. From District Nine. And District Nine. Yeah, that thing. And Avatar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, but no, it looks pretty sweet. You know, it's just about a guy who um, relives the same day, and whenever he dies, he wakes up. Live, die, day. reload. Yeah, they say that. I think, or repeat, repeat. Whatever. whatever. But anyway, it looks pretty cool, and he's got to figure out what's going on and how to save himself or whatever. It looks awesome. Yeah. Uh, another one <laughs> weird is uh, Jupiter Ascending, directed by the Wachowskis. Um, Channing Tatum looks pretty stupid. Channing Tatum looks stupid, and the fact that it's Channing Tatum and Mila Kunis, it just feels like they're out of place. Not that Channing Tatum doesn't do action movies, because he does, but just them two together, it feels out of place for this movie. It looks cool. Like it, I mean, I mean, like visually, it looks yeah, really it, cool. Yeah, it, look, it looks pretty. It's the Wachowskis, but you can't really get excited for a movie directed by the Wachowskis anymore, because yeah. they haven't really had anything good since... The Matrix. Which I haven't seen Cloud Atlas, but they also co-directed that. And yeah. That was, that one was a very ambitious movie, so it's a little different to, to judge. But it looks weird, so yeah. I'm going to wait and, on that one to give a full impression. We also had Bad Words. Bad Words looks hilarious. The directorial debut of J Jason Bateman. Yeah, which is another... Team of Two's Jason Bateman. <laughs> <laughs> which in and of itself is like a selling point for me because obviously I love Jason Bateman and if he's directing a movie, I'm down and it's him playing a douchebag. Yeah. And it, I don't even know what to compare it to really. No, but... Just, yeah. It looks like a, just a raunchy adult comedy yeah. about a guy doing 8th grade spelling bees. Yeah, he finds a loophole and starts <laughs> doing spelling bees. Becomes friends with this little Indian kid. Yeah, and it looks hilarious. Look it up. Uh, Godzilla. Godzilla is my most excited. Uh, excluding excluding Spider-Man Two, which we'll talk about later. Uh, Godzilla looks badass. Like, uh, I'm. I like to consider myself a Godzilla fan. I'm a Godzilla fan. It, um, you know what? When I was a kid, I thought the other Godzilla was okay. The 1999 starring Matthew Broderick, and then I got older and realized that it was bad. One thing I wish, though, is I wish they'd bring in Godzuki. <laughs> that would make the Godzilla movie so much better. But this one has Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch and Walter White. It does. Brian fucking Cranston. Brian fucking Cranston with hair. And it looks like even the opening of the trailer where they're falling out of the airplane and the... Yeah, the red, red trails. Smoke. Yeah, and then, like, you just see the spikes coming in. The, it's in the, like, destruction of the city. Oh, man. It looks awesome. Intense. They're really showing how powerful this thing is, and how like obviously hard it would be f for humanity to fight this giant fucking monster like that. Like it looks. It's gonna be so good. It's gonna be awesome. Super excited for that. Um, what What else do we have? We have uh, Terminator. You know they're doing the new Terminator movie. They've got a lot of casting rumors. Apparently the two girls. Uh, well, uh, the top choice so far apparently is Amelia Clark, who plays Daenerys Targaryen uh, yes. in Game of Thrones. I think she'd be a pretty cool. Um, and what part is this for? Sarah Connor. That's what I, I thought. Said that. Sarah, Sarah Connor. Connor. Second, and uh, coming up in the in second is uh, Brie Larson from oh, nice. Scott Pilgrim and V. Adams. Pretty two pretty good choices. But then uh, the guy up for John Connor is Jason Clark from Zero Dark Thirty and White House Down and Lawless, Greg Gatsby. Yeah. Which would be a cool choice. Issue with that though is that he's obviously older than Sarah Connor, so that makes me really That's curious weird. about the timeline 
and what the actual plot is going to be because, you know, if maybe he goes back in time, maybe, maybe... Well, the thing is, if they're going back further into Sarah Connor's past, you got to wonder what kind of repercussions that'll have on the timeline of Terminator and how yeah. that's going to make sense. So I'm, I'm pretty curious to see, because, I, I mean, I like Amelia Clark. It, it'll be cool. It'll be cool. Um, hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. We thought Salvation was going to be cool. Which I, I can defend Salvation. There's cool things about Salvation. I think that there are issues with it. Um, I kind of wish this one was just a sequel to Salvation, even without Christian Bale. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah. Um, also, um, Paul Walker died. That's a big thing recently. Paul Walker died. Fast and Furious 7, they're... They're still going on with they're it. They're still going on. Like, I read today that they might retire the character... So maybe they'll try to salvage what footage they have of him. Because I also read that an early rumor was that they were just going to start from scratch. I don't think they should do that. Which I don't think they should do. That. I think that because you, I think that Paul kind Walker of disrespects would, Paul Walker. Yeah, I think they would want him to go on. Yeah. You know, like kill um, him in the movie off screen. You know, and or not even that. You know, I make think that it, Vin Diesel's fuel for going on. That's true. I think they could do that. Uh, but I mean, I, I would even be fine with them just doing like maybe. Maybe Brian and uh, and I forgot the character, but uh, Jordana Brewster, you know his love, his wife, love interest, or whatever she is. Yeah. If them and their kid, maybe they left. They're like, hey, we, we want to get, get out. out. We want to get out of this. This is coming too real. I've got a family now, and so they leave. I, I'd be fine with that. Yeah. You know, makes maybe, sense. You know, you don't even have to kill them, but yes, yeah, so they might be salvaging what they have and, and moving on and, and returning the character, which I think would be smart. Um, but that's kind of the disadvantage of having them die while they're in production, as opposed to. I feel like that sounded really bad, but you know, like as far like with Heath Ledger, they finished all of his stuff. Yeah. And they were good, but now it's like oh, they have to salvage what they can. Um, Hugh Jackman might leave Wolverine. Hugh Jackman might leave Wolverine, or he's unsure of the future, which apparently they're still planning a Wolverine sequel. Um, I would, but you know, I could I could see him leaving. You know, I mean, he's pushing forty five. You know, he's been he, Wolverine forever. He's been Wolverine forever. No, I don't want to see anybody else's Wolverine. I feel like we, I, not that I don't want to see Wolverine, I just don't want them to recast Wolverine right now. I feel like I would prefer that they waited and then maybe they and casted somebody a little later on. Or he could just, Hugh Jackman could come back yeah, and see Old way. Man Logan. He could be Old Man Logan. I just, uh, as much as I think Wolverine should stay in X-Men movies, if Hugh Jackman doesn't want to do it, I would retire have, Wolverine. Just retire Wolverine. Make a, you know, there could be a reason. Uh, you know, but he's pushing, he's getting old. I mean, I can see being at that age and trying to keep up that shape that he has to have for Wolverine can be hard. Um, yeah. I don't know. I feel like they, they would bring in a new Wolverine, though, and just keep it going. Some just younger person. Yeah, I feel like they would, too. But I don't even know who I, I can't even begin to wonder who they would cast as Wolverine. I just can't even think of anybody. Although, if they cast Channing Tatum as Wolverine, I'm going to slit my wrists. <laughs> I don't know if I'd go that far, but I might give up on Wolverine. <laughs> I may not slit my wrists. That's extreme. But I, <laughs> I would not be pleased. Um, and you know, now I'm going to be thinking who could play a new Wolverine all day. Well, if you think of something in the course of the rest of Nerd Talk. Okay. But uh, the, thing that, uh, the issue that, which apparently that interview where he said that, was actually taken before they announced... X-Men Apocalypse due for 2016, which Brian Singer is confirmed to return to direct. So uh, Age of Apocalypse, Sabretooth wanted to come down for this conversation. Yeah. He has input. Apocalypse, as we know, I mean, he's one of the biggest X-Men villains. Like, definitely, I'd say... He is a horrible person! But he's probably the most powerful. You know, it's a good villain because obviously we've just seen Magneto and I mean Sebastian Shaw was in first class, but it's basically just been Magneto. Yeah. You know. Now it's gonna be a very imposing, like powerful, like fuck he could destroy everything villain. You big X Men threat. It's a big X Men threat and it's really cool but, and apparently So I was gonna say one thing that will really be cool about X Men Apocalypse is if they don't bring Cyclops back in this one, he'll definitely be in that. Yeah. Because Cyclops is one of Apocalypse's evil people. That would be interesting. He has actually. long hair. That could be a really cool approach. It's actually, uh, like missing an eye. That could be really neat to bring. That'd be a neat way to bring him back then, actually. Yeah. You know, because that could be a big deal. Like, oh, it's Cyclops and he's against us. You know. Um, and I don't know, like Wolverine at that time would also be a villain. Yeah. Fair enough. To be cool. And you know what? It actually versus Hugh Jackman. Yeah, that'd be crazy. 
you know, they, they've announced, well, there was the rumor is that it's going to take place in the past, like following the first class cast and not, okay. and not present day cast, uh, which is interesting, but makes me wonder if it's going to start a new timeline. Maybe we're, maybe they're gonna Star Trek it, and there's gonna like, you know uh, there's just gonna be a new story, and like a That's new right. timeline. Yeah. And maybe it'll make sense to have the apocalypse version of like Wolverine being evil or Psychos being evil or whatever. That could be an interesting approach That'd to take cool. it. That'd be cool. Because I think maybe they didn't confirm. I don't want to say they confirmed, but basically said he's gonna be like he will make an appearance in Days of Future's Past. Like probably pro most likely in a credit scene. After credit scene, mid yeah. credit scene, or whatever. I wonder who they're going to get to play Apocalypse. You know, back in the day, I would have said Michael Clark Duncan, but unfortunately, with him passing, rest his soul. Yeah, he, it's, that's not going to happen. But that's who I would have said. But I, besides that, I don't know. Vin Diesel. That's <laughs> not what I'm going to be. Vin Diesel because totally Vin Diesel do should it. do everything. Or The Rock. Or The Rock. Oh, Dwayne, that would be Dwayne good. Johnson would be a sweet Apocalypse. He would be a good Apocalypse. Uh, he would be a good Apocalypse. That's true. Um, I mean, Apocalypse has to be huge. Yeah, he needs to be he needs to be intimidating, and I wonder if they're gonna motion capture him or if they're gonna make him a real person. Which you know, the rumor they were saying in that a spoiler, in case this ends up being true, is that they're in the credit scene. It's gonna be like Magneto is hiding out in some cottage or whatever, and something crashes onto Earth, and he goes and looks, and it's the alien being, and it's apparently Apocalypse or whatever. And he's like, "Oh, I've been searching for you," and Magneto's like, "Who are you?" And then I guess Magneto absorbs him, assuming that he becomes Apocalypse. Okay. Which I don't know if I'd like that, but... That'd be sweet if it was Angel that did it, so he could become Archangel. Oh, that would be epic. They need to have Angel in the next one in some way, because he's he was underutilized in X-Men 3. Because Archangel would be sweet. Archangel would be sweet. So I want to talk briefly, really quick, if it's okay if we change the subject. Okay. That I went and saw Superman the movie in theaters the other day, because Alamo Draft House was playing it. How was it? It was awesome. Obviously, I've seen it before. It's not one of those I've seen a lot. Um, as much as I loved it, and I, I've seen Superman 2 more than I've seen Superman the, the movie. Like, there were things, there were even things that I saw in it that I didn't remember, things that I didn't pick up. Like, like when we saw Ghostbusters in theaters, there were little things like Lewis's facial, you know, expressions yeah. that we just never caught before. Uh, there were things like, I know you've never seen it, but Lex Luthor's uh, lackey is really stupid, Otis, mm -hmm. played by uh, Ned Beatty. 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 <laughs> Anyways. Hilar he's hilarious anyways, like, how, just how dumb he is and the things he says, I mean, you know, Mr. Luthor. Uh, but there's just things that he does that I didn't catch on to that were really funny, like when Lex Luthor is talking about, you know, whenever he makes his, you know, really f probably too quick realization that Kryptonite would kill Superman, um, he's describing, like, you know, when the meteors came crashing and you see Otis, like, mo he's, like he's, like, motion acting out meteors <laughs> crashing, and it's just a little thing that was really funny. And, um, and like, uh, yeah, it's just like little things like that that you notice. It was just really cool seeing Superman in theaters. I bet. It was just one of those things that you just need to see. Like, it, you know, like I really I still want to see Back to the Future in theaters. I, that's, what I was, that's what I was saying. I was like, man, out of all the movies I haven't seen in theaters, I want to see yeah, Back to the we, Future. Yeah, we've seen Jurassic Park in theaters, and that was awesome. And we've Indiana seen Jones. Indiana Jones in theaters, and that was awesome. Which, that was actually the first time I saw that in Indiana Jones, which was an awesome way to see Ghostbusters. So, Ghostbusters in theaters, like... You know, I haven't seen any of the Star Wars in theaters either. Me neither. Well, I've seen... I mean, the prequels don't uh, count. They don't count. But, you know, there were things in Superman in the movie, like, I just felt nostalgic seeing it on screen. Like, even in the opening credits with the music, you know, because the yeah. Superman theme is so iconic. And uh, and then when he rescues Lois in the helicopter, and it's like his big reveal of the world was so cool. And Christopher Reeve, man. Ah, oh, sad. So many dead people. So many dead people in the world. We keep talking. We keep talking about people that die. It's depressing. So, so let's let's have the place up. You know who'd be a good Jimmy Olsen? A guy at work and I were talking about this, and he ma he mentioned it, and I thought it was amazing. Let me guess. Let me guess. guess. Let me guess. Aziz Ansari. Yeah, Aziz Ansari would be such a good Jimmy Olsen. He might be like he might be a little too old for it, um, but no. I but I think that they could do it, and I think he would be hilarious as Jimmy Olsen. He'd be he a, would be an amazing Jimmy Olsen. He'd be a good comic relief because you know one of my few complaints with Man of Steel was that. There, were, there weren't like it was. It was so serious the whole time that there were never like these light, ah, like made me laugh moments. I think there, yeah. I mean there might have been, but I don't think it was intentional. I mean I don't know. Uh, like whereas like assuming in the movie, there's a lot of funny things like with Jimmy Olsen or Clark Kent being all bumbling and awkward or Perry White saying things that are funny. You know this one didn't have a lot of that. Um, Jimmy Olsen would be an awesome perfect comic relief that they could have because he's such a funny character. Him and his relationship with Clark, as he so sorry would be awesome. That'd be sweet. I think Shia LaBeouf could be a, a decent Jimmy Olsen, but Aziz Ansari would be awesome. 
So Zack Snyder, if you're listening, think about that. Okay, let us cast the movie. <laughs> <laughs> They offered Denzel the part of Lex Luthor. Apparently. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, the rumor is that they've also intended not, not. But he turned it down. They're not solely testing uh, like African American people, but they're they're including you know they're open to everything, which I, which I'm fine with. You know, I have no problem with Lex Luthor being a black guy. You know. Also, if you're listening, Zack Snyder, Idris Elba. Idris Elba. I we always say him for everything because <laughs> he's the black Nathan Fillion. <laughs> yes. But, um, but uh, you know. And he's already familiar with playing a character named Luthor. Yeah. So he already has that down. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So apparently they offered it to Denzel Washington, but he passed or something. That's the rumor. And I think that'd be, I think Denzel Washington would have been a really neat Lex Luthor. Um, maybe it should be Martian Manhunter instead. Mm. Yeah. Which they've also offered a role apparently in talks. Is I don't. I'm not gonna butcher his name, but he plays Count Drago from Game of Thrones. It's Jason Momoa. Oh yeah, uh, no. Conan. Conan. New Conan, um, which I think, the rumor, I think the big rumor is that it could be Doomsday, which would be interesting. Yeah, I, I almost think they should say, almost should save Doomsday for like Justice League, but but maybe, be, unless that's what it is, he's going to be a bit part and build up or whatever, really cool. Yeah, that but then I guess weird. the other rumor is that he could be watching Manhunter, but I think they'll be wasting his, his intimidation appeal. Um, but I guess we could move on to the other big news with Batman vs. Superman then really quick. What's and that? That's, uh, one, they cast a woman, Wonder Woman. They did. Recently, and uh, it's also Gal controversial. Gadot. 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 Gal Gadot. Gadot. She's really attractive. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've, only, from... I've only seen her in Fast Five. She's from Fast Five and Fast Six. Um, I, so I can't judge her acting too much because I've only seen her in that. And she wasn't bad in that or anything. No. She was just like, I mean, I would never have even guessed her from Wonder Woman. And. Uh, uh, it's not the look Wonder Woman no, deserves. No. No. I, she's obviously got plenty of time to bulk up whether she gains weight to get curvy because she's really skinny She's really scrawny like skin and bone yeah. like she's like a model like a typical model looking woman um, a Fast and the Furious girl. Yeah, and um, She's obviously got, if she bulks up. I'm gonna be perfectly fine No, because I mean yeah, I'll have no judgment. I mean she kind of looks at me in the face I mean whatever but like I just feel like Wonder Woman needs to be a bigger, more she, intimidating lady. She needs an Amazonian appeal. She needs that Amazonian, which I, I kind of like that they casted somebody more exotic, so she'll be like exotic, you know, because she yeah. should be she shouldn't be like a white a per, like an American like white lady or whatever. But she needs like size to her, and I feel like Warner Brothers almost missed out on a good opportunity because, like, with Wonder Woman, this is going to be a big deal for for a female driven character. Or, I mean, a, a woman char a woman character in, in movies because they don't have many action. You have a lot of female action stars, but like this is going to be huge. Yeah, this is going to be this could be a potential role model for 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 young women out there. And I feel like if they would have had a, a curvier woman, that would have been a great uh, like role model for people because they could see this awesome, powerful female character who's not skin and bone. You know, size, and they don't have that because you know, obviously there's all the. I mean, uh, it's. I mean, it's well known that women have. They feel that way when. They, I mean, because uh, the way women are portrayed in, in media, being model skin and bone. You know. Yeah. And a lot of actresses who go out of their ways to get really skinny because it's like the norm or whatever. I feel like they missed out on an opportunity. They could have had a. They could have put somebody in a limelight that wasn't skin and bone, and and now it's. I feel like they're almost catering to the horny guys watching these action movies, which, I mean, it makes sense. Obviously, guys are the ti are the primary audience yeah, but to this action movie, but it'd be a great way to bring in a good female audience. Like, you know, you know, I mean, if Christina Hendricks would have been Wonder Woman or something like that, just for example, you know, not that she would have been a great Wonder Woman, I just don't, I don't know how I feel, but, but like, you know what I mean. Yeah. You know, somebody with, which I think we mentioned Jamie Alexander being an awesome Wonder Woman, and she's not, she's not bigger by no means. I think she's got a little bit more curved to her than this girl does. Yeah. But... I guess, but like you said, they could bring Yeah, she's got plenty of time to, to, to pick up sweat. So, so we'll wait and see. If she ends up just being really skinny, then I think I'll have a problem because Wonder Woman needs to be a little bigger. But it could, it could be fixed. Intimidating, powerful. Yeah. It could be fixed. I agree. Well, we'll see. Uh, like we said with Ben Affleck, you can't judge until we see it. Yeah. yeah we don't want to judge anything prematurely. It's not fair to the actress to, to be judgmental this soon. Unless Channing Tatum's in it. Unless Channing Tatum is in it, and then... <laughs> exactly. I will write it off. <laughs> if they cast us like Nightwing or something. Oh, or Green Lantern. 
I really hope this Warner Brothers Studios or whatever are watching this because if they see this, they'll be like, oh no, man, that's a wonderful idea. We why why didn't we think of Channing Tatum as everything? Tatum is everything? <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah. So. So I guess we should probably end it there. No, we got to no? talk about Spider-Man 2. Do we? Okay. Amazing Spider-Man 2 trailer was released. It was. And I think it looks pretty awesome. You know, we, we, we talked about this last week, and we had, or last time we had our hesitations, um, even though you were saying that, like, Spider-Man was the best, and I, or could defeat everybody, and I, I had good rebuttals. Um, but the new movie looks really good, I think. The, the trailer looks all right. Just all right? <laughs> it looks all right. I... I mean... Like I said, it, it doesn't give me, like, the chills that it should. Like X-Men Apocalypse, you know? or the X-Men Days of Future's Past, I got chills. Yeah, and some, some trailers, when I just watch them, you know, I just, I get that feeling, it's like, oh my god, like, this is the best, and as many times I watch that, like, there's that, always that one scene that's like, oh. Yeah, no, totally. I didn't, I didn't have that effect. I, uh, I, I don't think, well, I kind of did, I've watched it, I've watched the trailer several times in different, you know, just because it was Spider-Man 2, and... There's the moment at the end of the trailer, the battle with Electro is really cool, and I may not have gotten chills, but it was like, man, that's awesome. Like, that's so fucking cool. That little, it, that little bit, like, the visual effects. That bit did look cool. Um, I think that Dane DeHaan is, like, nailing Harry Osborn. I just, you know, I feel like as weird as Green Goblin may end up being, maybe his performance can kind of help make up for it. Yeah. But because Green Goblin, I don't know how I'm feeling about that. It, it doesn't look... It's obviously him as Green Goblin. Like, yeah. it's, it's pretty obvious now that it's him. Because you um, see that scene with Norman, like, dying. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, um, Rhino. I kind of think it looks pretty cool. The it, 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 looks be it looks better than I thought it did. Yeah. But... Um, also, I think that there's a part of the trailer alluding to the spoiler to the death of Gwen Stacy. Because they're in this, what is it, like, the clock tower or whatever, whatever they're in. Like, there's just this moment where... You see her, and then Spider-Man shoots his web down, like maybe he's shooting down to catch her. It happens really quickly. And I think she was even wearing the outfit that her character wore in the comics when it and happened. It, it, it needs to happen. It's the, it's, the best, it's the best thing that's ever happened in Spider-Man. It's, it's very iconic in the Spider-Man it, comics. so iconic. Because he tries to rescue her, and he doesn't really know if it's if his web catching her that killed her, or if it was, or he shoots you. It's, it's the dead. big Spider-Man death besides Uncle Ben. Yeah, it's, it's huge. And, it's a big turning point. And you know, that even though they cut Mary Jane out of the movie, I kind of wish they would have had Aunt Mary Jane introduced before they killed her. That way it's not just bringing up a new woman already. Yeah. Like it would I think it would have been better if they had her... So it would almost make sense. So we, nice we have the group of friends that they have in the comics. You know, right. The, and you so you can kind of know there's something between them that would obviously build up and maybe maybe she's as a friend. She'd be like, you know, supporting him as shoulder to cry on after Gwen Stacy dies. Yeah. And yeah. But I don't know. I think it looks pretty awesome and I am... Uh, I had doubts, and I think my doubts are kind of gone. It just feels like a Spider-Man movie. It feels no. like a comic book movie, and that's the, why I'm so excited. The trailer made me feel better, but yeah. but I'm just yeah. oh oh oh, and they they had Doc Ock's uh, tentacles yeah. and the vulture wings, and the which vulture was wings. an awesome little tidbit, awesome little like Easter egg in the trailer that you know, because obviously it's building up to the Sinister Six that we've been hearing about. Sinister Six is going to happen. I'm but, excited to see the vulture. Vulture will be sweet to see. I don't. I mean, Doc, Doc Ock. Ock. I'm oh, excited to see Doc Ock. Depending, I mean, it's all. That's gonna be a casting thing. If that's all gonna depend on. That casting last Doc Ock was so good. So good, and it's kind of soon to be bringing Doc Ock in. But, but it has to be done. But it has to be done, especially for Sinister Six, and I'm super and I'm really curious to see what casting's gonna be like. So, so uh, yeah, I think um, maybe we'll wrap up Nerd Talk right. today. I think next time. Maybe we'll talk about our favorite holiday movies, our favorite Christmas movies. We, we'll, we definitely will have seen The Hobbit by then. We will have seen The Hobbit by then. We'll have thoughts on The Hobbit and the Interstellar trailer, which is supposed to be released before. That has not I'm been I'm excited for yet. that. I'm very excited for that. Um, we uh, recently put our project, Happy, on Kickstarter. We did, and it's doing I mean, it, we, we're, we're getting it. Um, it's, it's a slow start. It's a slow so start, but that doesn't mean anything yet. But check it, that, but check it's that out. It's, it's regular. Kickstarter.com, Happy. Kickstarter it's on our Facebook as it's well. On our Facebook. Yeah. So it's not hard to find. That's right. Thank you. Tune in next week on Nerd Talk. On Nerd Talk. <laughs>